So this time of year, maybe, maybe, possibly, you're spending a little more time in the pool. I know my daughter had her three babies in one of those, like, little blow-up pools uh, yesterday afternoon on their back deck. Now, I think, I think they probably had a bath afterwards, but there are some parents, I'm not going to say that it hasn't happened at my house. Once the kids go swimming, you go, well, they don't need a bath. They've been in a pool. <laughs> oh, the chlorine and stuff. Yeah, I mean. It, yeah, but Liz has her own pool. If you go off to the public pool. That's different. The neighborhood pool. Please. Yeah. Please. Because there's, you know, there's things in there. Well, possibly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Little boys and girls will use it as a restroom. Well, but I they, mean, come on. But it happens. Some ages, and you know, they've got those little swimmers, the little diapers that are specifically made for the pool, but they don't catch everything. No. And, and if, sometimes the pool closes down because of that. Well, yeah, depending on what it is. But uh, yeah, so some parents say, you know what? They've been in the pool or the lake. Uh they don't need they a don't bath. They don't need a bath or a shower. I, I can I can see the the reasoning behind I it. I can too. The, but the brain listen, process. listen. Ninja's mom has a routine. What is it? She will take a shower before going to the pool. But also, she does that with the beach too. Before, not after. Before. So, huh? <laughs> okay, I get it. I can see showering. I've seen off. that. I've seen I've seen rinsing off at That's the pool I mean, yeah. so that e so the either the sunscreen or the germs on you don't go into the pool. So sure, it's like a dirts. courtesy thing. Yeah. So does mom do it afterwards as well? I don't think so. So not so always before the pool, not after the pool. Yes. Okay. That is different. Like a full shower, like washing of the hair before yeah. getting in the pool. Scott's wife, on the okay. other hand, she's like, "Hey, that, it's done." It's doubled. Well, there's water involved at the pool, but now when we come home from the pool, you know, you've got all that chlorine, especially in your hair. So we make sure the kids really, when they were younger, of course, really take a, like a double bath to get all that chlorine out of the skin and off double the hair. Double bath? Too. Yeah. I can see that washing so, the hair yeah. twice. Rub a dub so, dub. So the water is cleaned out of the tub and then, and then poured back in again? No, 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 no. Like just a double scrub. Make sure you yeah. get a really good bath okay. after the pool. Yeah, maybe yeah. washing your hair twice to make sure all the chlorine. Because yeah. um, I don't know anybody this has ever happened to. I can't remember anybody. But chlorine can put a green tint to your hair. especially. Really? Yeah, especially if you are you have lighter colored hair. I did not know that. Yeah, so you want to make sure huh. it's all out. Plus the little eyes, you know, you want to get the chlorine out of the eyes. The little eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like okay. the baby's eyes. Oh, eyes. I get it. Okay. Because they, I, like, I will not open my eyes up under the water in chlorine. But I did all the time as a kid because you're diving for toys or, you know, playing yeah. the little games. So, yeah. I wear contacts when I'm when I'm outside. So I always put goggles on. I would think so. I don't want I don't want them to float away. Oh, no. Here's an open mic that came in on the My His Radio app. My daughter has a friend that's a swimmer, and she swam with the YMCA pool here in Raleigh. Her hair would turn green because they swam every day, sometimes twice a day. Her blonde hair would have a greenish, algae-ish tinge to it. Ooh, algae-ish Well, yeah, because it's got that green. But you know what? It's kind of in style now. What's that? Green hair? Well, all the different colors of hair, the green hair doesn't stand out at all. I, I guess she's right. <laughs> Here's another open mic on the My His Radio app. Good morning, Rob and Liz. This is Rhonda. You were talking about uh, green in the hair. That came from the old um, brass pipe or copper pipes. The chlorine would make it leach out, and that would uh, turn the hair green. Oh, okay. So I wonder if it's different today then. It could be, you know, because I don't think you have brass pipes in. I don't know. I don't know how a pool, but ours is not. So yeah, she has. Is it salt water? Yeah, salt. I think it's more of a hybrid, but yeah. Hey, my name is Rachel. When I was a lot younger, my hair used to be really, really blonde, and my hair would turn green when I got out of the pool. Okay. Wow. And it does. It only happens if you don't wash your hair um, and you have lighter hair. It's not going to happen if you have black or like mine, dark, dark brown. Yeah. Here's another open mic. When we were little, our hair used to turn green because we were kind of a beach blonde babies. And my grandma used to make this mix of hair conditioner and just some water 
shake it up in a little spray bottle and we'd spray it on our hair before we would go swimming in the pool and it would keep our hair from turning green. That's brilliant. Like a protectant. So it's like it's like watered down conditioner. You spray in the hair. And it makes sense. So before you blow dry your hair or use a straightener or a wand, you can put a heat protectant in it. So I think grandma was kind of a trendsetter. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. There is one building that dwarfs any other building in America, and it's one World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. Don't know if you've ever been in that. What's the tallest building you've even been in? What about you, Liz? Um, That would be 30 Rock or Rockefeller really? Plaza. Really? All the times you've been in New York, she's go, she goes to New York almost once a year. Right, in February with the girls. But I've just never paid to go to the Empire State Building or to go oh, to... Oh, it's worth it. Yeah, I mean, I go to Ground Zero, but I don't go... Wait a minute, you got to pay to go to the top of the rock. Right, but I'm not going to pay. Once I, you've been to one, you really don't need to go to the other. It's oh, the no, same no, no. Site. One World Trade Center is an experience. Right. The elevator itself has all the digital display. It's like you're standing in, in a time warp because at the bottom floor, it starts like you're underground. And then it goes to building the two towers... And then the current tower, and then all of a sudden you're at, you open up at the top as if you you went through this journey all the way through from the bottom all the way to the top of it. It's it's cool. I'm not giving it justice on how I'm explaining it. Well, I I thought it was just an elevator ride to the top, and then you just saw. No, so, it's okay. more than so that. So the next time we go, it we keeps may have to you do inter- that You've got to do it. Okay. I'm serious. You got to okay. do it. But next time you're going to be in Oklahoma City, that is where America's tallest building is going to be. Oklahoma City. I know of all places. I mean, they have it's some odd. pretty tall buildings, but nothing like this. 1,900 feet tall. I don't know how many stories it's going to be. It'll be called Legends Tower. They say nothing about um, offices in it, but they do say luxury living. Hyatt's going to be in it, and a lot of a, a pool, an observation deck, or, and a couple of big restaurants. I mean, it sounds super cool. An observation deck would be awesome. I don't think I could live there. I don't know why, because I'm not afraid of heights at all. Well, okay. well, you can't live there. Luxury living. Oh, this well, yeah. Thing I mean, is gonna, that's I'm, that's not your two hundred and fifty thousand dollar home. No, I'm saying if I had unlimited money, uh, I don't think I could live there even then. I just the height thing. I don't know. Like well, I don't. Well, and here's the thing too. This is Tornado Alley. Yeah, this no, is I'm not Oklahoma there. City, but they say it's going to withstand all that stuff. They're making all those precautions, and they're going to have some buildings down, three other towers at the bottom that that don't go up the whole height of this big, tall thing. I, you know, I just, Tornado Alley, how many 1,900 square feet in the air? No, 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 no. it's going to be 1,900 feet, feet tall. tall. Yeah. Yeah, no. 1,900 square feet. That's not quite a big building. This is Selena, and I was calling about the tallest uh, building I'd ever been in. We went to South Korea to visit my daughter uh, two years ago, and they took us to Latte World Tower. It is a giant mall, and it is 123 stories. We couldn't even see the top of the building. It was actually in the clouds. It was uh, very impressive. 120-some-odd stories. Latte? What is it called? She said latte. Latte? I wonder if they have lots of latte. But a mall, 123 stories? That's a yes. big old mall. All right. Uh, Lisa said she texted, and she said the tallest building she was in, uh, she believes, had 60 floors. And when you look down, the people look like ants on an ant hill. Oh, yeah. Being that high up. I know. I don't know how many f- stories 30 Rock is. Oh, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't even tell you how, how many stories the Empire State Building is. We've been on that. Yeah. And let me tell you, they at least 10 years ago, last time I was at that one, the Empire State Building has an MP3 tour, and it's a cabbie with That's a cool. really thick New York accent. And then he tells you stories of what you're looking at from the different numbers that they have of the observation desk. That is deck. very, That's very the coolest cool. thing ever, yeah. When I was at 30 Rock, somebody got engaged. Like, I turned no. around, and the guy popped the question. I was like, oh, my gosh! And I totally, like, just uh, bombed their, their proposal because I was just, oh, my goodness! I'm not exactly sure how tall the Statue of Liberty is, but she is the tallest statue or building that I've ever been to. And I went when I was in eighth grade, and we were allowed to go all the way up into her crown. And I have pictures of the book she was holding in her hand. You know, I've never been in the Statue of Liberty, only uh, been in a boat by it. 
we were on the grounds, but we didn't go in either. I was like, stairs? <laughs> no. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. Gas prices are coming down a little bit, and they say even a little bit more by the time the 4th of July gets here. Yeah, which is not typical, because typically around the 4th of July or, you know, any of those holidays where there's going to be a lot of travel, it kind of inches up a little bit. But, uh, like, three forty-eight is what most people in America are paying. Ain't what I'm paying. It I was know, right? Under three dollars. Oh, you got it under three under because $3. In, I was reading in Mississippi, it's under three dollars right now too. Yeah, as ra- people are traveling. No, around the corner from my house, it was. I think I paid two. No, I didn't pay that. Two ninety one. I take premium, so mine was over three dollars, but regular was under three. So was that a, a Sam's or something? Because Sam's um, seems to always be cheaper. Sam's. I didn't get mine at Sam's. I got mine at a grocery store that has like gas pumps out front and it was a little cheaper walmart has some of those too yeah, which walmart. would be the is it a walmart you went no. to because walmart will have the same prices as sam's because it's the same company yeah and i think and i've never done it because i keep forgetting about it i think inside the walmart app you can save even more really yeah per gallon i've never used it so i'm not really sure how it works but i've seen save 10 cents or whatever it is really right so i don't know my husband has one of these cards from uh, one of the gas stations. He got gas. I think it was like a dollar sixty something. What? A gallon. Because if you go in and you get like fountain drink, you get five cents off. If you get a bottle drink, you get something off. If you get a biscuit, oh, you, you got to buy more stuff to get. But if less he's, price on the gas, right? But if he's going in and he's getting a drink anyway, might as well, and then get gas for under two dollars. Okay. Yes, please and thank you. Well, look at him. I Rob and Liz, his morning crew. It's Rob and Liz in the morning, his radio. If you overeat, oh, that tummy starts hurting, like it starts to stretch a little bit, and it's just, oh, it's uncomfortable. You got to wear your turkey pants, so you got a little <laughs> Turkey <room>. pants <laughs> with the elastic in right? it. Right, exactly. Yeah. If you know you're going to overeat. Well, Tavia did not wear her turkey pants. She went to Golden Corral with her family. Oh, you can overeat there. Oh, my goodness. There's yeah, so much chocolate fountain and all that stuff. Mm-mm-mm. So, So she's there with... I think it was 10 other people, like in her family, they just went. um, And about halfway through the meal, she starts doubling over. She's like, oh, my goodness, my stomach is killing me. something bad. That's like slow down on the rolls because the rolls will get in there and expand and start causing some issues. Yeah. So she um, excused herself. She went to the restroom, had a baby. Wait a minute. She didn't know she was expecting. Wait, she did not know? She didn't know. How do you? Yeah. I mean... There's there's something where some women can go their entire pregnancy or part of it and not even realize they're expecting, and that's that's what, her. Really? So Tavia has like three or four other kids, so you would think she would recognize some of those symptoms. Why are my feet swollen? <laughs> you know, why am I starting to gain mm-hmm. weight just in the little abdomen area? But why did she didn't. something just kick me? Yeah, exactly. Ooh. Wow, uh, gas bubble. But no. Is this like a rare thing? Can it's this, a rare thing. This can actually happen. Yes, it's an I actual mean, thing. Because Ninja is due on July 14th. Are there days, Ninja, you feel like you're not pregnant? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, no. <laughs> at all. There was something about Scott, and was this at a grocery store, Express Lane, something like that? I felt like it. We need an express lane check-in at the hospital when my son was uh, born. You know, he he took his time. My daughter was early, a couple of weeks. My son was all comfy. He didn't really care to come out. But when he was ready, he was ready. So we raced to the hospital, and we get there, right? We filled out all the paperwork beforehand. And the lady was just, like, so nonchalant about, oh, okay, well, you know, just hang on a second. Let me get this form for you to sign. And we're like, the baby is on the way right now. And I'll never forget that. It was just very, very slow. But finally, we got back there and had everything taken okay, care of. Let me of. tell you, Scott Watson is one of the most <laughs> chill people he I know. He is very chill. To see that he got, like, really, you know, I come was on. Not chill. I was not chill. I'm like, are you <laughs> kidding me? Come on. I've never seen that well, side of Scott. I've but, never seen that side of you, Scott. Because there were signs that the baby was on the way, like imminent. <laughs> right. <laughs> the lady needed to check them in. Here's the thing. If you didn't feel, fill out the paperwork, was she just going to say, no, you'll have to wait your turn? I know. That's what I was wondering. What are we going to do? Just sit over here and just... Have the baby here? No. Me and my family, we've been listening to his radio for a long time. 
I just remember as a kid when my parents got saved and Jesus turned their life around. His radio was always there. And uh, I'm about to have a daughter today. I pray that whenever she's old enough to drive, his radio will still be around so that when she turns on the radio, she can turn on his radio. Thank you guys for everything that you do. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Harold. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, everybody. You guys are great. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. Let's take a trip back in time when your little one was in the shopping cart as you're at the store and they would belt out, oh, in song. Like this little one. Head and shoulders, knees and toes. And I mean, this kid, no holds barred. She is just singing it out. Right? I love it. I mean, so you gotta much. like it. Here, here's near the end of that video that's been posted. cutest little voice. It's Robin Liz is radio. (laughs) I love this so much. So I know that one of my kids used to sing the Barney song. I love you. You love me. In the grocery store? Just anywhere would just belt it out. And then one of my kids would make up songs. Oh no. And he would sit on like a stool in our house in our living room with nothing but cowboy boots and a diaper on (laughs) and would sing Nobody knows. <laughs> the trouble and, I've seen. Yeah, and at Christmas, Santa Claus don't know. <laughs> he would do this little dance. It was the cutest thing. The best. I love her, though. He does the toes. Knees and toes. Head and shoulders, knees and toes. Anything, best exercise around. I know, right? Is there anything better than a baby voice or the smell of a baby? I just, I love it. You know, when they're fresh out of the bath and just... <laughs> I, I seriously, I thought she was going to say fresh out of the womb. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. I know school's out for summer, but you've got to give it to our teachers that invest so much into these students. It's Rob and Liz in the morning, his radio, just like Mrs. Fisher. She's an elementary school teacher. She loves her students so much that she would give anything for them, like a little boy who's five by the name of Ezra who needed a liver transplant. Yeah, she found out that Ezra needed it. She noticed, you know, he wasn't playing with the other kids and he was lethargic. And then, he, of course, she heard his story and she's like, you know what? There is something that I can do about this. And so she went to have a test to see if she matched. And boom, what do you think? She matched. So she surprised the family and everybody. So she goes to the school right before it's out for summer. She writes on this big sign. Hey, Ezra, would you like to share my liver? Check one. Yes or no? And, of course, he checked yes. You see the biggest smile on his face. She's ready just to do. I mean, who does that? Mrs. Fisher does. Right. She's already pouring into these little kids and their lives and their futures. And now she's given Ezra a new lease on life. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. It's Robin Liz in the morning, his radio. I like to travel, but I also really like a staycation. You get to know your city a little bit better, your area. And now if you're somebody that really loves a staycation, plus it saves you money if you do a staycation, you can be paid to do it. Be a staycation ambassador. How so? So what you're going to do, Retail Me Not, is I go there all the time because they always have online coupons or store coupons. Yeah, I have the app. I never use it, but I know what you're talking about. Why don't you ever use it? So I don't shop. Oh, yeah. Well, I bet your wife Amy does, right? Maybe. Probably. She uses Bada or something like that. Oh, yeah. That's where you upload receipts and get money back. I have a friend that, that uses that. Well... Retail me not whether you use it or not. They want to pay you because they they want you to go in your city. They're going to choose an ambassador. And they want you to go wherever you live and sort of report back on the things really? that you've seen. And it, they're going to pay you like $1,000. That's it? I know. I thought so, too. It sounds like. So are they going to do $1,000 plus all the expenses think, to do the, or is the $1,000 for it? No, I think $1,000, I think, is going to you um, for your work in reporting back. And then they may give you the money to do those things. But, you know, a lot of the things that you do in your own city don't have to cost anything. There's museums. There's lakes. There's parks. There's all kinds of things. That's true. So you can do all kinds of things without really spending anything that, Oh, you know, look at Liz. Make a picnic. She's going to do all the free stuff, take the grant. Are you kidding me? Yes. Uh huh. I mean, otherwise, now it could pay you to to do some of those things you might not ordinarily have the money. What about for. eating? 
picnic? She's still going free. Well, you got to buy at a grocery store. Well, yeah, but you're already buying groceries. It's not like you're on a hunger strike or something. I mean, you're so what's this going to tell me about my city? It's going to tell other people about your city. And look, there's but so many. But if you many... do all the free stuff, I don't mean to cut you off, but you're, if you do all the free stuff, what about the the foodie locations and things like that? That I would want to know if I don't know your city. Well, I think they are not telling you how you have to enjoy your city. Okay. I think they are saying, do your staycation, you know, the best things about your area, and then report back. You may not live in a foodie city. Oh, there's foodie stuff in every city. Not there. There's there always a is, local thing. Right, but it might be just be one place, you know? Yeah. It might not be an actual foodie city. You might be Can more you imagine of the arts and museums. Spending a grand in that one little foodie place, that one little restaurant, you get a lot to eat. I would never. Yeah, bring all your friends. I'll have the Retail Me Not app.